Lady Corbel Holmes. Mr. Bell. Hello. What are we doing here? We're at the SMMT test day. Mr. Bell, didn't they see our last videos? Uh, I hope so, but for those who didn't, we are here. Well, welcome to slightly shambolic SMMT reviews. Welcome once again to slightly shambolic SMMT reviews. This is a 2022 Skoda Fabia 1 litre TSI 110 horsepower DSG, which sounds like a lot of letters and numbers, but trust me, it does uh, actually mean something. This is in the colour edition trim, and uh, we're just finding a way round the SMT test day here at uh, Millbrook in Bedfordshire. We're going to go on the, the hill route today, uh, which is the one you would have seen in Casino Royale, but we won't be doing any uh, antics uh, today like that. The maximum speed limit is 55 miles an hour, and this is the Aston Martin. What this is is a rather nice and comfortable car. I can straight away feel that it's very smooth to drive. I would prefer personally a manual, particularly if you've got a manual handbrake in this car, but uh, this uh, DSG automatic version is at least easy to drive. So the trim levels available on the Fabia are S, S E Comfort, I don't know why they just don't put just S E, and then Colour Edition. SEL and Monte Carlo. This particular car, uh, the base price of it is about £20,500, as tested it's about £22,500. We've got some, some options on this particular car. One thing I'm noticing about this car is actually that the ride's a little bit firmer than I was expecting. I mean this isn't a sports car by any means, but it's just a little bit on the firm side, which actually Skoda's off and are. The, previous generation Fabi that ran from 2015 to 2021 is also a bit like that. One thing it is though is, is just nice and simple. These controls feel really familiar to anybody who actually drives Volkswagen Group cars and I have done you know many many times over the years. In fact, we had a, a, a Mark 1 Fabia on the channel quite recently, and everything just falls nicely to hand. Okay, let's go, so we can get up to 55. 110 horsepower in this particular car, and I've got someone who actually might want to go a little bit faster than me in the right hand lane in a Honda HRV. Let's see about the composer of this. Uh, this chassis based on the same one as in the Polo, T-Cross, Tygo, all kinds of things like that, as well as the, uh, so, whoop, see what it takes these bumps. And the answer is, um, it doesn't feel the softest, but these are quite severe bumps. Slow down for this, uh, for this particular corner here. I don't know why everybody else is in the, uh, the lane on the right and I'm the one on the left. Maybe it's because uh, I'm just a slow driver, but... Right, massively tight hairpin. Wow! Oh, it just reset the trip on its own. I have out of my seat. Oh. <laughs> uh, have you hit a seat button on, Mr. Bell? Yes. Good like bad. Here it is. <laughs> Other engine options available in this in this car are a 65 brake horsepower version of this engine with no turbo. A 
80 brake horsepower version of this engine with no turbo and um, then a 95 brake horsepower version of this engine with a turbo but that only comes to the five speed manual this um, particular one it actually comes with a choice of two six speed manual and also it comes with this seven speed DSG automatic so we've got a 14% gradient we're going to be up in, going up now so that's going to be interesting Ooh. <laughs> I don't like those bumps I'm not going around those bumps again that wasn't that wasn't good that wasn't good I didn't, didn't enjoy that very much Wow, it's steep, sir. <laughs> this is crazy. But to be honest, apart from those but the chassis in this car is not, it's not too bad. The steering's are a little bit on the light side, but honestly, for a, a standard road car like this, it's pretty good. Okay, are you ready for Alpine hairpin? Here we go. Oh, and someone's photographing me around here as well. Wow, that's tight. <laughs> Okay, test the brakes. Brakes are good. I think this has got drums on the back actually, so I can't get too carried away. Here's the one where you're supposed to jump! <laughs> wow. And there's someone in the, that HRV behind me who, who uh, wants me to go faster, but uh, I'm a responsible Skoda driver, and so I shall not. I shall resist the urge. So this is the brand new Skoda Fabia, came out uh, towards the end of last year. It looks very familiar somehow, and certainly with the Fabia, each generation, and this is the fourth one, has been an evolution of the last. first one came out in 99, and uh, this one, well, just uh, maybe less than six months ago actually. This is the uh, 1 litre TSI 110 horsepower colour edition with the DSG gearbox. The range starts at uh, around £17,500, rising to about £23,500 in a Monte Carlo. This is the engine that uh, you know probably I would choose myself um, because I've actually owned a car with this very engine. Not the same gearbox, the same engine. It's used in all kinds of Volkswagen Group products. But because this is a Skoda, we'll straight away notice features that are here, such as the ticket clip in the windscreen, and on a more sort of upper or mid-spec car like this, let's just turn that off. Upper or mid-spec car like this, we've got the uh, umbrella in the driver's door. And then, of course, the classic Skoda thing, the scraper in the fuel filler flap. In terms of the way that this car looks, it reminds me very much of a Scala that I actually did a walk around of on the channel uh, back in 2019. Certainly with this new Skoda lettering along the back of it, to see if we have a reversing camera in this car. You know, I'm not sure we do. I think we just get parking sensors in this colour edition because it sits almost exactly in the middle of the five trim options available. The boot is actually the same size as a Volkswagen Golf, it's exactly the same, it's 380 litres, which is really good. Now you think this, this doesn't look that big, but we can take this up, this, um, this boot floor that you can put up in that position as well if you want, and then below that there is actual, actual spare wheel viewers, that's amazing, come on autofocus, um, an actual spare wheel. It's only a space saver, but isn't that fantastic? Just put this back. It's difficult with one hand, but I think I can manage it. There we go. I'll do. So yes, adjustable height, boot floor, same amount of space as in the Mark 8 Volkswagen Golf. Huge, big, solid hooks, which I used to appreciate very much in my old set Toledo. I don't know where the 12 volt socket is, I presume there is one somewhere. Hmm, there doesn't need to be one, Beers. It's interesting, there's not one in here. 
manual boot, but that's no problem. I mean, the car starts less than eighteen thousand pounds, so you may not really expect an electric boot. I'm not sure I'd go necessarily for the colour edition because I just I don't really like black alloy wheels on a car. But in terms of the size of them, 17 inches, that's quite good. <laughs> These switches have been in, in Skodas and things for ages, haven't they? Let's check the Isofix ports in here. Yes, they don't actually have any covers, but that means you can't lose them, which is excellent. So we just climb in here. Now, someone really tall has been sitting in here. I appreciate the fact we've got a, a, a light-coloured headlining in this, which uh, makes it a, a little bit... Um, a little bit lighter. Lots and lots and lots of room for feet under there. I think it, you'd have to go up maybe a, a trim or two to get the centre armrest in, in here for the, the front two occupants, although there's no centre armrest in the back at all. There isn't one. Let's see if they've improved the quality of the plastics on the doors. So that's something that in the past has been a little bit um, <laughs> sort of a cheap feeling in previous Fabias. It's definitely an improvement, it's better. These door handles feel very, very nice, for example. And, you know, there's lots of practicality in terms of the uh, rear door bins and everything like that. But it's, unfortunately, still... It's still the same kind of hard plastic we used to get. But, again, that's the same for loads of stuff. Even, I think, the Polos have uh, got that as well. Even the GTI has got that. So, not necessarily a problem. Oh, we've got LED individual rear lights. That's very nice. Uh, map pockets for things and all that sort of uh, stuff. It's reasonably easy to get in. It's actually, you sit a lot lower in there than I thought you do. The, the sill to get out is quite high. But it's still not difficult or anything like that. It's just um, a little bit lowered, sitting down in the back than I was expecting. So, got some LED headlamps. It looks very sort of visually similar to the previous Mark III Fabia, particularly the facelifted one which uh, they all have VLED headlamps and things. Keyless entry, of course, in this car. Yes, I recognise that starter button from my old Toledo. That's, I think you even use on things like the Enyaq. But that's OK, because it's not like the sort of ID3 or something. Well, it's not great. They put a sort of handle to close the door in a position where actually where you need it to nice and low to pull it. That's really good. And yes, instead of fiddly sliders and things like that to operate of heating ventilation. This car's just got standard air conditioning. It's got some nice rotary um, dials in here for doing it, and it feels really nice quality. You might think that's a bit strange to get excited about that, viewers, but I know a lot of people on my on my channel, that's really what they prefer. They prefer this kind of simple thing rather than anything else. And look, you've got a m proper manual handbrake as well. Isn't that fantastic? Someone's very kindly uh, left me a little converter to plug in my MiFi. That's very good. I imagine as well that we can try out some Android Auto Apple CarPlay if we want to. I don't think that's a wireless charging port. I don't think it's wireless in here. We've got DigiDars though, which uh, the basic cars, I don't believe that they do get those. I think um, they only uh, come in the sort of higher trim levels. But that's okay. I think some, of, some people wouldn't even want them. And we've got the same cruise control stalk as in my old set to lay there as well. And the same wiper stalk. I'm not sure we get auto auto wipers in this. We do we get automatic lights though for certain, and that's a that's a nicer feeling thing than the, what I'm used to. And actually the general material quality is quite good. Let's just see if I switch hands here, what it's kind of like um on here. Oh, it's still the same kind of sort of hard plastic though as um, you know the polo has it wasn't really a surprise or anything it's just you know um, the way things seem to go out of the Volkswagen group we've got um, some typical again Volkswagen switches that will be familiar to many of you and to, to do the heated mirrors typical for sort the of Volkswagen group thing you put it down there but yes this is better than the, the Mark 8 Golf and that this is a physical rotary switch for the, the lights actually if I open the door it might be better if you can see that there we go physical rotary switch which feels feels perfectly good doesn't like me doing that view with the key in it That's something that uh, to be aware of sunglasses compartments in here of course it's actually it's actually padded on that side too do we get illuminated vanity mirrors we do not well we have another clip here in addition to that clip there for uh, the car park 
So if we turn the system on, we've got the key, I've got the key in here, so if we just turn that on. So you might need to turn the car on, so I'll swap hands here, there we go. Great, okay, let's turn that down with a nice physical rotary control. Turn that off, no copyright infringement, that's very good. Right, we don't have sat-nav in this car, but I imagine most of you are not going to be needing it anyway, because what you'll be doing is using Android Auto, Apple CarPlay or Mirrorlink to connect your phone. In fact, there's a whole phone menu here, but uh, we haven't really got a lot of time to actually actually do this, so uh, we're not going to we're not going to do that. Media controls are there. Menu. Um, yeah, I've got two USB-C ports down there. It's really hard to see, but there they are. Here's the rear window mm -hmm. switch. It's just mm -hmm. there. You can see there should be extra things in here because we've got a few blank switches, but this menu looks nice. It, it reminds me of um, the previous generation Octavia, actually, this, it, which was a very kind of like like this. I do apologize for my uh, vibration of the phone going off there. Um, let's just see if my secret mission documents actually fit in the glove box, because it looks pretty big. Yes. Yes, they do. Fantastic. Secret mission document heaven. So yeah, no central armrest. Personally, I, I don't, I don't really mind that kind of kind of thing. It's it's not it's not a concern for me. But maybe for some of you it is. It just it depends on what you want. So if we do this, we can. Ooh, I don't want legal information. I've got time for that, unfortunately today. Um, have a look at there. Oh yes. Why has it only got 32 miles per gallon? Maybe it's been driven fast or something around the high speed bowl. <laughs> Uh, we'll have to. We'll have to see. Okay. Uh, so, has light switches in a good place. That, that feels. That feels really nice. Typical kind of uh, sort of Skoda mentality. You you get obsessed by the little small details. And I also like these these vents. These are really nice. Although, turn that off for a second. Although I'm just a little bit concerned that if I want to, actually no, there's a little cutout in the door, so you can alter that if you. If you want to, although I don't, I don't know how you actually alter the rate of the air coming out. It doesn't seem to move. I like this sort of a uh, Fabia logo on both sides of the instrument binnacle here. That's nice. And uh, down here we've got a um, nice big storage compartment. I think the fuse box is probably no, no, it's not a fuse box. Wow, it's another compartment for coins and cards and things. That's excellent. Although the little sort of coin holders that used to have in the centre here on the previous one aren't actually here anymore. Got, uh, got reek and, sorry, reek and rake adjustment. I must get my words out properly. And if this is anything like all the other um, recent Volkswagen cars I've driven, um, then we'll be able to sort of go through here and cycle through various things. So this button here. We're going to start it, aren't we, viewers? Yeah, we're going to start it. One second. Okay, we're started up. We're in park. We'll see straight away if there's a reversing cam, won't we, if you just put it into reverse. No, it's just rear parking sensors on, on that. So if we go through the consumption figures, let's see if we just can scroll through like that. There we go. I, f I knew we'd, we'd find it eventually. It's on this side of the steering wheel just here. There we are. They're not sort of touch buttons like they are on some Mercedes models or anything like that. So not gone far, um, 12.7 miles. I'm sorry about the, the light, by the way, of you, is it's just a way that it, it, it goes today. Um, the temperature gauge and fuel gauge are, are quite interesting. They're just these little gradations on the side. I thought they were part of the de design of the instrument building. I didn't realize they were actual gauges. That's, uh, that's really quite remarkable. I, I like that. Okay. Right, so we can cycle through various sort of different things. Let's see if this, uh, this button here does. Oh, we've got lane assist and, and front assist as well. Uh, well, that'll be handy, won't it? You never know what the driving is going to be like on one of these test days. Um, there we go, okay. Let's just have a look at this engine, just for the sake of posterity, because uh, maybe some of you haven't seen it, although I've driven lots of cars with it. So, one litre TSI engine in this application, 110 horsepower, three cylinders. I think it only uses about three and a half litres of oil, actually, so they're quite 
cheap when it comes to service it because there's not much oil that goes in. This engine's been used in all sorts of cars for over 10 years now. There are other versions of this and uh, you would have heard of what the other power outputs are in the initial driving section we've done. This uh, coolant reservoir is different though from the uh, earlier versions of this engine although everything else looks just so so familiar. For some reason they don't write TSI on top anymore but they used to but, but uh, apart from that it looks really really similar. Ty tiny battery for something like this. No mild hybrid system in this car though so that keeps things relatively simple. Right I think it's time to go out for some more driving. The really exciting um, one of these though is um, the 1.5 litre four cylinder engine of 150 horsepower that's only available in the Monte Carlo trim and uh, only available with the DSG gearbox. I suppose that's uh, what we need. Overall, with its combination of um, spaciousness, its easy manner of driving, surprisingly good chassis, and just general kind of simplicity in comparison with lots of modern cars. I really like this uh, new Skoda Fabia. I really, really like it. Anyway, thanks ever so much indeed once again for watching this episode of Slightly Shambolic SMMT Reviews. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video and leave a comment below. Thank you again to uh, Mr Bill and Eddie Caldwell Holmes from uh, Fuel Power for having me film today. You'll be seeing some of the cars they've chosen to drive themselves, no doubt on their channel a little bit later. And uh, see you again soon for more shambolic reviewing. Every time you haven't got it right, you're one of us. Do you know? I'm